The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 438 Lovely Weather Today When Starlight spotted Gerardo and Slipstream returning, it was sans Max and with Wallace Whitewing in tow. The gigantic griffin's wingspan was easily broader than both of their friends put together, and Starlight briefly stopped to marvel that something as big as him could fly at all. We located a constabulary without much trouble, Gerardo panted, landing and quickly straightening his crest. However, Wallace appeared, and I felt compelled to give him the entire narrative, and we may have slightly lost track of time. It's fine, Maple offered with a disarming smile. Melia wasn't back yet, so we gave Serena the locket, and she said thank you. Hi, Wallace. Are we doing anything now? Wallace flashed his massive grin. Well, hello to you too, little lady. And fear not about the passage of time, tis merely late afternoon. I'm hearing you all have been busy. Yeah, not really. Valet hovered, pounding her foreheads together. Yeah, we got robbed and did some other stuff, but it's basically been a lazy day. Ha! You seem more chipper, Wallace congratulated, turning his tree trunk of a neck to face her. I take it whatever run-in with chance you had to alleviate that bothersome curse had its desired outcome. Something like that, Valet licked her lips. Hey, yeah, uh, I feel there was something we were going to ask you, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, Wallace winced. Well, you always have my ear, should you remember. I'm curious, though. Still thinking of taking on the tournament in your nearly restored state? Valet glanced around, shrugged, and nodded. I guess so. Don't see why not. Sounds like it could be fun, and it would be sweet if we got that border pass thingy out of the deal. Right now, I kind of just, uh, she rubbed the foreleg. Gotta move around, you know? Not fun being barely able to walk. Wallace winked. I've lectured you enough on your odds of winning if you cannot commit yourself to a goal with 110%. Now that you're back on your hoofs, however, how about a friendly sparring match? It'd be a taste of what you'd go up against aiming for number one. Bring it! Valet twirled her head on a wingtip, nodding appreciatively. I'm down for a good fight. Don't complain if you get a little more than that, young Cerosian, Wallace respectfully warned. The lower field is being set up for tonight's concert, but there should still be plenty of space for an arena. Care to do battle now? We could get dinner afterwards, my treat. Valet stretch. Oh, I'm already fired up from hunting that punk earlier. Let's go! Wallace gave a direction, and they began to walk. Not sure was a quick decision, Maple remarked, glancing up at the giant griffin. Are you sure you two will be feeling up to dinner after? Try not to get hurt. Ha! Not to worry, Wallace assured. The local hospital is quite good at treating injuries from this kind of thing, and a fight is always a good way to work up an appetite. Besides, we're playing for experience, not for keeps. I'll call things off the moment they look dangerous. Hey, Wallace, Slipstream asked, walking comfortably on his other side. What do you think of Chauncey? Chauncey, ugh, Wallace grimaced. I am in his debt. He did a great favor to my team some time ago and saved the life of a very dear friend of ours. Additionally, he wields strong influence over Percival's style of governance, and none can deny that it is effective. By all accounts, he is an admirable stallion, and his ideals have been tried and found in favor of his Valdi and its people time after time. Yet still, I cannot trust him. He is too secretive and makes every move as though he were up to something. Maple frowned. When you put it that way, he sounds kind of like Ernby. Sparky's dad, Valet clarified at Wallace's look. Hey, how long is she taking to get here anyway? Sometime tomorrow is my best estimate, Wallace replied. Diego is with her for navigation, and it all depends on the speed and power of a ship. The Sky Goat is not the air's fastest craft, but it is not confined to the meandering course of the river or forced to battle currents at every turn and juncture. I already told you, James Rice remarked. Chauncey's no good. It's mean as hideous. They crested a minor hill on the way down from the central plaza, and the lower field came into view. Several teams of griffins and unicorns were unloading boxes from a series of carts on a nearby road, focused around a broad stage to the far end, but Wallace had been right. There was more than enough room for a battlefield without getting in anyone's way. Starlight glanced at the town to the north and east, wondering if it was actually big enough for a field of this size to be fully occupied. Gerardo, Wallace coughed, clearing his throat, can't I fly over there and let someone know we're requisitioning part of the field for practice? We won't get in anyone's way. 
Gerardo scrambled to bow and soar off, leaving Wallace nodding into the distance. Back to Chauncey, I must know. Why do you ask? He put his principles really on edge, Maple admitted, but they talked like they were good friends, just didn't act like it. It felt wrong. Ah, they have had a falling out as of late, Wallace confirmed. It's something that's been kept out of the public eye for the sake of the image, but apparently his management of the performances was causing tension and nobody said anything until it boiled over in an incident that left a bad taste in all three of their mouths. If that's what you're worried about, I can assure you all three of them want on some level to repair their relations, though I don't envy the amount of work those two girls will have to put in to do it. It's hardly one of the most suspicious things he's done, or even on the map for that matter. Jim Jars raised an eyebrow. Oh, so he is suspicious then. What does he do? I told you, nothing. Wallace coughed uncomfortably. With Chauncey, it is a matter of mannerisms of actions. I do watch him, but as far as I can tell, he is a Cerusian who puts the well-being of his valley first and enjoys doing ordinary things in highly suspicious ways. It still sounds like Aaron by Maple murmured as they made their way further into the field. Only with Aaron by, I always felt like he had our backs and was on our side. Uh, with Chauncey, I'm not so sure. Wallace nodded along. Having your back, specifically, Chauncey is concerned with his Valdi as a whole. Some days, I only think he helped us in particular because he saw we would have a great deal to contribute to his Valdi's cause and wanted us as allies. If you consider him as having your backs, you're mistaken, and if you're right, you should be worried. But I wouldn't fear. Poking around for wrongdoing in the shadows is my job, and I can assure you none of his Valdi secrets are threat to you or the Empire. Flea glanced suspiciously at him. That sure is specific. Wallace didn't even make eye contact. Lovely weather for a fight, isn't it? The air quality is so pristine it feels as though my lungs are crying tears of happiness. How wonderful it is we can live in a place like this. Uh, what? Slipstream giggled, sniffing the air. It does smell pleasant out, but that's quite a way of changing the subject. Fillet sniffed too, then frowned. Eh, doesn't matter. If Chauncey's a villain, I've stabbed better than him with a giant icicle. Let's talk about fighting. A prime decision, Wallace congratulated, bouncing his crinkly mustache. But who has time for talking? Right here. Everyone, stand as far back as you're comfortable, and let us begin. End of chapter 438